Hi Tinkercad Challengers, my name is Miss Sam here again to show you how Maze Challenge is going to work. So I have here a balloon car. I'm going to hold up the camera so you can see it. So this one is going to be a combination of 3D printing as well as other materials that you're going to get once you get yours printed out. This was a fun challenge and actually a very challenging challenge. So in the video, you're going to watch how I go through the Tinkercad lessons and follow along with the lessons as best I can. Unfortunately, I figured out that when I printed everything out that the Tinkercad lesson was it needed a little tweaking. So using my STEM knowledge of problem solving and pretty much like hypothesizing and reprinting and trying to figure out what works, I finally figured out the best way to make this balloon car. Okay, so like I said, it's a little bit different than the challenge, but I will be following along the challenge and then sometime in the middle of the video, I will change it up a little bit, so be aware of that. But overall, you see here, um, you're going to make the body, uh, the wheels, unless you want to pick out your own wheels, but you have to make sure that there's a hole in the wheel. And the top here, that's going to be the blue nozzle, and the back is going to be accelerating way to push the car forward. So think about, too, if you want to tweak this out a little bit, this is what Tinkercad, their balloon car, looks like. I included a little snippet of Thingiverse, which has a lot of uh, balloon car ideas. I don't want you to pick one out from them, but I do want you to see what kind of balloon cars they have and then how you want to make your own. And whenever you're ready to print it, um, please, if you can, join the Tinkercad Challenge classroom. The class code is in the registration. Once you uh, once you get registered, you'll see the class code in the registration email. If you do not get the email, I'm attaching the class code to this video right now as we speak. And once you are finished, please email me. Let me know if you're done. Pick out a color. This one is the rose tan, so it's very much a beigey looking color. It looks a little uh, brighter in here, but it's it's a beige color. Once it's ready to pick up, I will no notify you or notify your parents when it's ready. I hope you have fun making the balloon racer. It's going to, like I said, it's going to be fun. It's it's something that you could have races with your friends. So if you, if you have friends that would love to do something like this, design a car, please let them know and please have them register. Have fun creating this month of May's challenge, the balloon racer. Until next time. So this month is going to be a little bit different in terms of Tinkercad projects. We're going to do something that is strictly from the Tinkercad project section. So when you go to Tinkercad, you should see um, in the learn up here, click on learn and it'll take you to this page where there is starters, lessons and projects. So you want to go to the project section and click on see all projects. And we are going to look for the balloon powered car. To make this balloon power car, we're going to follow the instructions. I want you to think about when you're making your balloon power car, if you want to add any changes or additions to your car to make it your own. What Tinkercad offers is a great introduction how to make a simple car, but there are so many cars that I've seen online that other people have invented that create a really awesome balloon power car. So when you click on balloon power car, you'll see the description of what it is what you're going to do in this lesson and then also for those who are STEM teachers you could see what these different instructions provide in terms of a, a classroom setting. I'm going to start here, create the body of the car and click on start. Click off the comments. So you see on the left screen, if you've done any of the lessons before, this is pretty much the same. Tinkercad does a goes over a step-by-step -step instruction on what you're going to create, how it's going to look, and then some additional photos that you can reference to to make sure that your car is in the right spot or you're creating the right thing. So I clicked on next. I'm going to the main page and it says place a box on here, the work plane, and the size to be 20 millimeter wide, 60 long, 20 tall. So tall would be this, so it is 20 millimeters tall. Wide is gonna be like the side. So if I click in again, 
I could see is 20 millimeters long. I'm sorry, wide. Now the length is gonna be what we see in the front camera position, so I'm going to change this to 60 millimeters. And what I'm doing is just clicking on the white uh, squares at the corners, and then just clicking in here to type it in. I personally like to do that a lot easier to control than to stretch out the corners. So I've done that, I wanna to continue to the next step. Place the cylinder on the work plane and size it to 11 millimeters diameter and 25 millimeters tall. So if I click on this, it's actually 20 millimeters diameter. So when you're changing the diameter, you have to make sure you change both sides. And then over here you see tall, we gotta change that to 25. Okay, so it says change the cylinder to whole. I just dried out the whole cylinder, so I, I did a little bit different, but I've done everything else, so I'm gonna continue to the next step. Oh, and for those who need a photo, in case you forgot, like on here you could see that the 11 millimeters diameter is shown on this photo as well. So don't forget to reference the photos if you need a little extra help. Rotate the cylinder 9 degrees so the long direction crosses long ways through the body. Okay, so I'm turning, I'm going up here and clicking right to my camera. Basically, just pick a side. So if you want to click left, it's the same thing. It's just obviously the opposite side. Now up here, this is where you'll find the rotation tool. So I'm clicking on that and you, I can see it's definitely rotation because of the degrees mark. And I'm gonna type in 90. So there we go, it turns sideways. So select the box and the cylinder and align them to the bottom of the box. Okay, it's kind of a strange way to, structure a little, a little strange, but I'm gonna look and see what it means so it looks like it's at the very bottom to the point where uh, the sides of the cylinder are actually touching the sides of the box. So I'm gonna make sure I follow that exactly. Uh, let me make sure I up the sides. Once again, I love having smooth sides for my uh, projects. So I'm just using this the care tool to move it over and then I'm also hitting the keyboard key to make sure I got it as close to the edge as I can. And it looks like I gotta make sure that it goes all the way through, so I'm gonna hit the right key. Okay, so it says rotate your view to look at the model from the side. And I am looking at the model from its side. So I'm gonna select the cylinder and press the left arrow key on the keyboard five times. One, two, three, four, five. It says it will move it left away from the end of the box, which is what the picture's showing. With the cylinder still selected, use the back arrow on the top to lift the cylinder up from the work plane three millimeters. So I'm gonna move it one, two, three. So you see here, this is what um, three millimeters up from the work plane looks like. You'll see an arrow that shows you your position moved upwards. All right, con continuing. Duplicate the first axle hole by selecting duplicate on the button on the toolbar. So up here, this is duplicate. I'm gonna click on this. So there is a double there. Change the snap grid to five. So I'm going down here, the snap grid. I've mentioned it before. Changing it to five. And rotate the view to look at the car from the side. Press the left arrow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. This will move the second axle formula from the first. So it's great that they actually add this just in case maybe you got lost with your uh, yours or maybe you gotta make sure that the snap grid's on correctly. Select all the images, group them to a single item. So this will cut the holes out and the body looks like that. I'm continuing. So I'm gonna place a wedge shape on the the work plane. So this is what I dragged out. This is the wedge. And it's size to be five millimeters tall. So right now it's at 20. Change to five. 20 millimeters wide. So I'm going to rotate it. I'm not sure. Um, it didn't mention rotating it in the instructions, but I'll rotate it to match the picture. Okay. So I gotta change the length. So that's gonna be 40 and 20 millimeters wide. Okay, so that's right. 
All right, now the last step is to change it to a hole. And I'm going to click Next. Rotate the wedge 180 degrees so the flat side is on the work plane facing upwards. Okay, so the flat side right now is at the bottom, so I'm going to rotate it to turn it completely around. And now I'm going to select the car body and wedge and align them to the maximum to the left. I'm going to change my snap because the snap seems to not want to line these up. So I'm going to go back to one. There we go. So I, when I change, change the snap to one, it looks like it's lining up to the sides. So now I just want to make sure I follow what the picture looks like and pull the car, pull the wedge all the way to the top of the car. Okay, so it looks like the picture. I'm going to select it. I'm going to select both the pieces and going to create a group and it looks like it cut off the top of the car. So I went to next step. It says place a wedge shape on the work plane and size it to 20 mill millimeters wide. 20 millimeters wide. So this is 20, 10 millimeters tall. So I'm going to change that to 10. Oh, 10 millimeters long. I got that mixed up. And then 15 millimeters tall. All right. Then I got to rotate at 90. I'm rotating negative 90. So I'm turning it the wrong way, but so it says, let the snap grid to one, use the arrow keys to position the wedge in the front of the car. So I already changed it to one from the previous wedge. And I think now it is in front of the car. So I'm just going to group it. Okay. It looks pretty, it looks like it's matched up perfectly. So I'm going to click done and we're done with making the body. So this is what your body should end up looking like as per Tinkercad's instructions. So if you're satisfied and know that you did it correctly, then you can move on to create the balloon connectors spot. Okay. So it goes over. So the balloons I'm using for uh, this project is pretty much the same. So don't worry about changing the balloon connector, the standard blue size, it, it will fit the car connection pieces. So you will get a balloon once you get these all printed out at the end. Drag a cylinder onto the work plane. And once again, up the sides. So it should be 20 mil millimeters in diameter. So I'm going to make sure that's this right. So that is right. 10 millimeters tall. So I got to change to that. And place a second cylinder in the center of the previous cylinder and size it. So I'm just going to hit the duplicate button and I'm just going to pull this up. So 23 millimeters in diameter. So I got to change this guy up a little bit. And then height is going to be three mil millimeters tall. So it did move a little bit as close enough to this picture as I can, which I think I just have to change the snap. So I'm going to put it to 2.25 and I think that is centered. So I'm going to just pull the copy piece up. And okay. So I'm going to group this set first. And then I'm going to, this is aligned to the top. So I'm just make sure that it fits on the top. I'm hitting the F key so I can get close up or you can hit this key too. If I were to look at a different size and hit the left key, it just moves it to the left. So you want to make sure you hit the key that matches the camera size that you are using. And it looks like I see a line here. I see a line here and I see a line here. So everything is lined up. Anyway, so we're going to, pull the cone shape out and the size should be 23 millimeters in diameter to match the balloon nozzle. So we're going to change that and 12 millimeters tall. So I got to change that as well. Now we got to rotate it 180 degrees. So pretty much flipping it all the way around and the line, the cone. So it's touching the bottom of the lip and center in on it. So I up the size to make sure that it matches the cylinder. So it's nice and smooth and then just pull it straight up to kind of match the cylinder. Okay, that it's, they're not completely touching. They should snap together. There you go. So you see it kind of, it does that like a little click movement. Like it just clicks in place. 
Now I'm using the arrow keys to make sure those work together. And I like to use the whole shape to make sure that it looks like it's pretty even. And I think it is. It says in step four to group everything, so I do. And I'm gonna continue to next lesson. I'm going to do create the path for air. So this is uh, the third part of the lesson. And I'm gonna click continue. Okay, so this is gonna be a lot of steps in one section. So I, I do believe this, there's only two pages to this, so it will just explain how, what we're supposed to do. In the shapes panel drop down, select featured in shape generator selection. Okay, so when I clicked on shapes generator, these are the features that instantly popped up. It says look for the purple bent pipe shape and drag it to the shape of the work plan. So this is the what I'm looking for, bent pipe shape showed up. Set the outer pipe width to three millimeters. Somewhere is, okay. Outer pipe width, three millimeters. Now use the sliders for the other settings to adjust the other settings. To create an air channel that creates a path from the back of the car to the balloon connector. Right here, this picture shows that well, first of all, that this is a whole shape and that's what they mentioned might be a little helpful or turning the whole car into a hole. So I will turn the whole car into a hole. Oh, looks like I have two cars. All right, so I have a whole car as a whole and this helps me see where the axles are so I know not to, as it says down here, make sure the path and make sure the air channel doesn't break through the axle opening or all the air will escape to the axle and your car will not move forward. So. We do not want it to go through here. We want to make sure that it will surpass any of that. So I'm going to rotate this and kind of follow what the picture shows. So I turned the camera sideways. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, there we go. I guess the one good thing about this is you can always adjust your, you can always adjust the, the angle of the pipe later on. So I'm trying to get a good so it looks like this axle is a big inconvenience in the way. So I have to make sure that I completely avoid it. Right now I'm gonna focus on just getting the air current to go up here. So I got the pipe barely touching the angle of the car. Maybe this might work out okay. The only issue I'm seeing is though, is that the, here I'll make it solid so you can see. Potential pipe hole is not in the middle. And let me see if that's something that it should be in the middle. I do notice that this is, okay, this is not in the middle as well, but I wanna make sure that it points downward. So let me change the pipe piece a little bit. Turn this into a hole again, and I'm gonna follow more to what the image shows. I realized when I printed this out that overall the car was just having issues moving. So my way of trying to figure out what to do was that I found some other cars on Thingiverse that would work for me and I discovered and I believe that the problem is a multitude of things. Uh, first of all, I realized that the wheels themselves, that uh, because the axles and the inside are plastic. I think the friction is coming from the wheels, so it's probably best not to have these in general. So delete your wheels, and um, you could keep all the sizes off to the side here, actually, and delete the axles. And I did ungroup everything because this is how I print out things. So if you want to find your own wheel and you want to go in here, you're welcome to do that. So if you want to dra drag out this wheel, it just keep it the same size as your racer now. So because I had changed the overall wheel, I wanted to check out what the tube size is, and I found out that the center could, uh, the center has to be a hole of three millimeters across. What we're gonna be doing instead is doing a bamboo stick. So this is 20 by 20, and I wanna make sure that the wheel, it, the wheel center hole is going to be three. So I'm going to change this. So what I was trying to figure out is how to change the center of the wheel to be 
three in the in the wall that this to be but that would make sense if it's let's see. So this is going to be my new wheel and I'm going to test it with a cylinder shape. I'm going to make this three by three and I'm going to see if this fits into this. That is my plan. So I'm going to see how this works. Okay. So overall, I'm going to make this whole, I can see a little bit better. Okay. Overall, it is slightly, this piece is slightly bigger than wall thickness. So. Okay, you know what everyone, if you want to do a wheel this size, I will just account for the size of your car, okay? So you could do a wheel this size if you want that printed out. Uh, keep in mind though, the lettering will all be there. Now a car this size would be about this wheel. This radius is 10. Um, the height is still the same as this one. So this was your old wheel. Uh, delete that and you could do this one. So we have... Make sure the sides are up, wall thickness 8, radius is 10, it's 20 by 20, and then the top is 10. Sorry. Okay. Now, the wedge shape will also have to change size. So instead of 40, you can make it like a 20. And there's a reason why I'm going to show you why I did this. So I'm going to just move these wheels over and then work on the body. Okay, so I'm just going to... Just keep, uh, no, let's move this off for now. To move the the balloon nozzle, okay? So we're gonna take this nozzle, make sure it's grouped, and I have the snap grid to. I'm gonna change it to one, and we're gonna put the nozzle right in the middle. Okay, so I got it right there. Now the reason why I'm doing this is I found out that as I'm doing the balloon car, the ones that are working have the nozzle in the middle. So I think the car needs more of a uh, space to move over. So I'm going to put it right on the edge of this wedge. So the wedge is 20 length. The nozzle is going to be right on the edge of it. It's still 23. It's just going to have more space over here. Now I'm going to group them. I actually am going to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make the body a hole. And at this point too, you can change around your body if you want to make it more rounder. You can. The ones I used were round. I didn't want to change this too much because I know I would have to go back and reevaluate this. Uh, so let's make this a 10. I'm trying to figure out the right consistency of how the hole is going to look. I'm using my arrow keys, I'm shifting it over, getting a closer look. So my, my plan is I'm going to get the bent pipe shape to have the hole go through the uh, balloon connector out through the back and it's just going to go straight out. I'm trying to remember if I rotated it and let's see if I do rotate it, if it'll be fine. It looks a little awkward so I'm just going to change the bent there we go. I'm trying to make this a 90 degrees angle, so it's a complete right angle, so it's going to bend up and go out right through the back. Okay. The problem is I can't see. So it's a little bit of an up angle, but that's fine. I'm going to just move it down now. Actually, I might change the angle just a little bit because it is go. Okay. Now when I print this out, I'm going to make this completely light. So when it prints out, it should really just zoom across the uh, the floor or whatever you put this on. So I'm, I'm now grouping them both so that the hole cuts a piece out of the top. Um, I'm going to hit F key, get a little closer, and then it says 10 millimeters tall, 
Place the second cylinder in the work plane, size it 10.5 in diameter to 10.5 millimeters tall. This is going to be the X or the inner part of the wheel. Well, this really will be the hole in the front inner part of the wheel. Okay, so I guess reset the snap grid to 0.5. The size of the cylinder to 10.5 millimeters. Is that actually? Okay, so it does show you it should be 0.5 down here. That means it's in the middle of the cylinder. So I'm going to make it a hole. Okay, now it says I have to group them and it cuts a hole through the cylinder. All right, I'm going to continue to the next step. Place the cylinder on the work plane size it to 10 millimeters in diameter, 55 millimeters tall. Once again, I will increase the sides. So as I say, um, 10 millimeters in diameter, changing that to 10, and 40 millimeters tall, 45 millimeters tall. So this is going to be the axle that's going to go completely through the body of the car. So now it says, select the cylinder wheel and align them vertically. I'm just using my arrow keys to make sure that I have them um, together. I will change this color to match the image as well. So uh, select the wheel, duplicate the wheel, and then use the arrows to move the wheel up. So I'm going to match it. Okay, so I got that all set. Select both wheels and actually group them into a single object. Rotate the axle and wheel 90 degrees. So I'm turning the camera sideways and rotating them so that it is sideways. Position the axle through the axle hole. I'm using the F key to go closer view. I don't think it's really going to matter if it's even, but I did that. Once the axle is in proper position, select all shapes and design, including the body and axles and press D to lift them into the work plane. Okay, pressing D. So when in position, select both of the axles, group, and then select ungroup. Okay. Oh. Ungroup. Ungroup. Just should be able to select, select everything individually, and I can, so I'm going to click it. All right, so that was how you make your first car. So this is going to be my car that I'm going to print out. I'm going to add maybe more... You can add like text if you want to add, uh, put your name on it, or uh, put your name, uh, or put a name on the side if you want to name it something. I want to show you something else too in Thingiverse. So this website is where people who design things they can make, um, they make a bunch of 3D printed design things, and so on here they have, these are a bunch of 3D design balloon power cars that people have created. So if you want to take some examples and try to make some ideas based off these. Some of these are really interesting to see. And it's interesting to also see how they power their own, like how they power it's a little differently or even the holes are a little differently. So right here the holes is straight up and it just pushes out from the back. I think a lot of these do have that similar sh design quality. But it looks like some people even took like an actual car and then they added um, a hole maybe to create what they want to add in that. And then you can see all these tires too are a little bit different. And it looks like they use like wooden, like a, a bamboo, bamboo skewer for axles, which is a really interesting way to go about that. There's no right way to make a balloon power car. So when you make your car, uh, have fun with it. 
Once again, Tinkercad challengers, have fun. Email me when you are finished and I will have these printed out for you. And hopefully we'll have an actual balloon power car racing.